everyone. Good day from the Expo 2022. Uh, Bernhard from Switzerland asked who I am and I apologize for not introducing myself sooner. My name is Judith Moll. I'm a long time hang glider and paraglider pilot, originally from Scotland, but I live in Catalonia. And um, for me, this is a long meander home. So, uh, let me give you some updates from lunchtime at um, day five. I'm in Beauchot, which is on the border of France and Spain. I'm just um, to the south of, or southwest of Bagné Luchon. So, some weather info for you, first of all. To give you an idea of what's happening in the different turn points where still different pilots are, are trying to get to or have already got to. Um, at turn point three, Peña Montanesa, um, cloud base is going to be just above the mountain by a couple of metres and the winds are forecast to be southwest 40 kilometres an hour, possible rain this evening. At Abbas, turn point four, cloud base is forecast to be uh, five metres above the peak. Um, with a 10 kilometers an hour north north wind this evening from 5 o'clock, turn point 5, midi de Bigor. Um again, cloud base 5 meters above the top, and at 5 o'clock this afternoon, there is south southwest 35, mile, 35 kilometers an hour forecast. Turn point 6, El Choronco, is um, 2535 meters above sea level, and this afternoon at five o'clock we have a forecast of um, a cloud base slightly higher than the peak but with winds of 42 kilometers per hour south southwest or southwest possibly some rain this evening so that's where the leaders are heading at the moment i've got some bad news for you unfortunately this is my least favorite section of my updates we've had more withdrawals um, Giuliano and Minotella actually withdrew yesterday, but I, I didn't manage to put it in the, the update. Um, Luis Linde from Spain is also withdrawn. He had some knee problems that were, some old knee problems that were aggravated by the walks in the first two days. Heli Schrempf has had, from Austria has withdrawn. Um, he said that he was working so hard before the race and didn't give himself enough break time before he attempted something quite as big as this. So he's, um, he's withdrawing. To, um, to get some well-deserved rest. And finally, Edouard Potel from France um, has had an ankle injury. Uh, we believe it's from walking, not from an accident. Um, so they've all had to withdraw from the race as well. Um, a couple of penalties to announce to you. Um, Chevy Bonnet, Spanish champion and, and local pilot from the Pyrenees, has been given a 24-hour um, obligatory stop time for restricted airspace infringement. And Sergi Claret, also a Spanish pilot from Catalonia, has been given 24 hours penalty for a serious race, race rule infringement. Okay, I'd like to give you a few statistics um, about the race. So we know that um, Kriegel Maurer and Maxime Pinot um, covered a distance of 120 kilometers in the first two days, which were nearly all walking. Um, not flying. But then on day three, everything changed and we finally got some, they all got some distance under their belts. So top of that list of movers on day three was Christian Maurer, Kigli Maurer, with 230.5 kilometers. Now that's a distance not just flying, it's flying and hiking combined. Second was Maxime Pinot with 227.7 kilometers, then Pierre Amy with 231.3 kilometers, and other pilots who also did more than 200 that day were Simon Oberrauna, Tim Alonji, Tange Renogud, and Jordi Vilalta. So, yesterday on day four, the movers, the top movers, changed significantly. We had um, strong southerly winds, so the people who were heading up towards turn point four were getting the tailwind. The leaders who were coming down towards turn point six were going into headwind. So, the top movers of yesterday in terms of distance were Thomas Matera from Czechia with 79.1 kilometers, Fabian Umbricht from Switzerland with 77 kilometers, David Kopas from Spain, 76.8, Cedar Wright from the USA with 70.5, and Maxime Pinot from France with 67.1. Now, so that means that of the top 10 in the ranking at the moment, only one 
of those made it into the top five movers. So it just goes to show the difference between being in one part of the course and being in the other. The other top four were heading towards turn point four yesterday. Okay, so let's give you a bit of news about today. Um, despite the poor weather in France, it's better in Spain. And so on, at the back of the course, on the Spanish side, um, people have been flying this morning. Not big flights, but at least they've been able to get in the air. Where we've been this morning with Maxime Pinot, we managed to interview him and his supporter separately. You can see those videos at the Expo website under Race News. We were standing in rain with our raincoats, it was freezing cold, um, the cloud base was just sort of sitting on above, above our heads. And basically the plan for everybody who's in this part of the race is to get to Spain as quickly as possible. So, Keith Patterson, who had to do the 12-hour penalty, is back in the race. He managed to get four hours yesterday where he was allowed to move, and, um, and he's on course again. Um, Kriegel Mao stayed at a mountain refuge at 2,800 metres. Um, his supporter, Ramon Krebs, who's an endurance athlete, not a pilot, he um, ported all the stuff that he needed up there, food, drink, spare batteries, everything that he needed for today so that he could remain up there. Um, but his live tracker wasn't working and a lot of people have been asking like where is he, what's happened to him? Nothing's happened to him, he had a nice, well I assume he had a nice time up there, pretty nice on, on Google Maps. Um, and we're verifying his track using his backup satellite tracking device at the moment. But as far as we're concerned there's no irregularities and everything's fine and you should see him on live tracking again using our tracker from now. Um, Okay, so uh, Maxime Pinot, we caught up with him earlier. Uh, he said that he's finding this race mentally tiring and, um, and he uh, said that, you know, the walking and then followed by very challenging flying is taking his toll on, well, not just his physical but also his mental, mental state. Um, last edition, he had uh, a real a real issue with the Medi de Bougor. Um, it didn't, he had a long, long, long battle with that mountain and um, this time it wasn't any different. He had to wait the hour and a half, the was slow, he couldn't make the turn point. So he and that mountain are not friends, but hopefully in the next edition that might change. But he got past it and is on his way to turn point six at the moment. Now I've got loads of news from the teams that they've been sending me and I just don't have time to bring it to you in this bulletin, so otherwise it'll just get too long. So I'll just give you a couple of things from some teams further at the back and in the middle, and I will bring you more of that news in the next bulletin, I promise. So, Yuji Emoto, our Japanese pilot, he managed to hook up with Greg Hammerton and Inigo Gabriella, and the three of them made the progress to turn point two and are heading for the border but they're happy to be together with other athletes because it does help with motivation when you're not on your own. And um, Cedar Wright from the US, he had an absolute blinder yesterday. Now we will catch them, we hope today, to bring you more on this story because his wife sent us a message that said, Cedar says, I was shot like a ball out of a cannon over to the crest of in 40, sorry, 35 kilometer an hour winds. I knew once I committed that there was no turning back. It was a flight of a lifetime. It was equally gripping as it was spectacular. Now, as far as we're concerned, that's what the Expo is all about. Spectacular flights over spectacular scenery. I'll bring you more, but keep tuned to live tracking and keep watching the website at www.expo.com.